Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota. Produced by Lakeland PBS with host Ray Gildow. Production funding for Lakeland Currents is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Closed captioning for Lakeland Currents is sponsored by Niswa Tax Service. Tax preparation for businesses and individuals. Online at NiswaTax.com. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Lakeland Currents, where tonight we're going to be talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. For many, many years, those of, of us in the outdoors have been trying to figure out ways to get young kids involved in the outdoors. Specifically, tonight we're going to be talking about fishing. Uh, the DNR came up with a program a number of years ago called Minakwa, and it's a good program. I'm not saying anything negative about it, but we just didn't reach the number of kids that we wanted to reach. And there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, there are a lot of single families. Uh, kids are being raised by one parent and they don't have a boat. Or they're being raised in families that have no history of fishing, so they don't have boats. In fact, over 50% of Minnesotans who fish do not have a boat. A lot of those people have to fish from banks or from piers and that sort of thing. Well, along came a program called Fishing Teams in the high schools. I think it's one of the greatest things that's happened in our high school curriculum uh, since I was a kid. And tonight I want to introduce you to a man who has been responsible for starting a lot of these chapters around Minnesota. And he has his two sons here who are not only good anglers, they're really, I guess, professional anglers now because they've been in so many tournaments. We're going to call you guys professional. And one of them says he's much better than the other one, but I'm going to stay out of that argument. But to my right is Jason Barr, who is the Brainerd coach, one of the Brainerd coaches at the high school fishing team. And Jason, did you, are you the person that actually started the chapter here? Yep. Um, and tell us a little bit about your background before we get into that fishing team thing. Okay. Who, who are you? What do you do? Okay. So I, uh, I work for an insurance company actually called uh, Colonial Life. Uh, I've lived in Brainerd my whole life outside of a, a couple years. Uh, my wife owns a dry cleaners uh, downtown, Anderson Dry Cleaners. We've owned that now for about four years. And uh, I've always been a very avid angler. Uh, you know, fish some charity tournaments and things like that, um, but I uh, always really, really enjoyed it. And to your right is your son, Kyle, this yep. is a junior in high school? Yep, a junior, and then um, I'm actually doing post-secondary, so I'm getting my all my college stuff done, too, while going to high school. Good for you, and to your right is your younger brother, who is not as good a fisherman, according to you, <laughs> and that would be Ky uh, Ty Tyler. Yep. So we got Kyle. Tyler and Jason. Yes, sir. And uh, tell us a little bit in the beginning how this got started. And I know that Brainerd wasn't necessarily the first chapter in the state. No. But tell us, a, give us a little back, uh, background sure. about these fishing teams. Um, yeah, so about five years ago, um, I had heard that there was a couple fishing teams. It was very small. Uh, but there were a couple uh, organizations that had small fishing clubs. And I actually reached out to Walleye Dan, Dan Eigen, and said, hey, uh, you know, what do you think about this? Uh, you, what, you know, you want to help me do this? And he said, yeah, let, let's give it a shot. So we reached out to Flea Farm, and uh, Flea Farm said, we're in. We, we, we'd love to support something like that. So we, we contacted the school, the athletic director, Charlie Campbell, here in Brainerd, and just said, you know, here's what we want to do. Um, would you allow this? And he said, absolutely. Um, so we put up flyers in the school. Uh, we put it through the announcements. We did some things like that and uh, set up a meeting at the Forest View Middle School. We set up a meeting at the high school. And we were anticipating around 20 kids. We figured we'd get 10 younger guys. What, what year was this? This was in uh, 2013. 2013. 2013, yep. And mm -hmm. uh, so we went to the high school. Uh, uh, first, and we had about 50 kids show up. We said, "Oh, m more than double what you thought." Yeah, yeah. I'm like, "Oh boy." <laughs> <laughs> now what? Now what? <laughs> and, and then we went down to Forest View. We had like 75 kids show up. Oh my gosh! So we went from 20 to 125, uh, and uh, it was fun. You know, all it was unbelievable the interest that the, these kids had. They, it was new to us, it was new to them. Um, we kind of 
you know, brought out a concept. Here's how we think it works because there was nobody that was really doing something saying, here's how you start a high school fishing team. Do you know how, how many teams there were at this time in the state, roughly? I, I knew of four. Four? Four, okay. yeah. And, and one large team in, in Lakeville. Lakeville started about the same time we did, and I think they had 40 or 50 kids uh, uh, fairly early. Uh, the other clubs were pretty small, you know, four, five, six kids. And there was a small group of kids already doing it in Brainerd. Um, nobody really knew about it. And Just a fishing club. Yeah, in fact, Stolsky, uh, uh, Joe, right? Yeah, Joe, Joe actually won a national championship. Right, in Alabama or in Arkansas, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and that was kind of the, the fishing team at that time, but it was never really commercialized, if you will. It was just kind of those guys got together. They had to have a team in order to compete. Uh, they recruited a gentleman named Chuck Fields uh, to be their coach, and away they went. Um, and But they had never really approached a school or anything at that time, and that's when we approached the school, got the green light, and because of the size and the, as many you know, the youth that were involved, uh, it was very easy for us to get sponsorships and, and things like that. So we grew very rapidly. So that first year, how did you come up with enough boats? Yeah. And did you, do you call the boat uh, mentors, do you call them captains? Boat captains, yeah. Boat captains. How did yeah. you get enough boat captains that first year? You know, we did everything. I, I spent a lot of time on uh, Brainerd Outdoors on the radio. Uh, we were in the newspaper. Uh, social media was huge. Social media was, was our best friend. Um, but it was amazing the amount of people that stepped up and said, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. So you got enough the first year? And we did. In fact, uh, our first tournament, we had, uh, I believe it was 43 boats. It was up on Gull Lake. And so we had 86 Brainerd kids on the water at, wow. at one time for our first tournament. So in the beginning of doing this, did you have like little instructional sessions to show them how to use equipment and that sort of thing? You bet, you bet. And, and th that's one of the biggest parts about a fishing team is probably only about 40% of our anglers actually fish tournaments. Uh, the, the rest of the youth are there to learn how to tie a polymer knot and how to rig a Texas rig and what rod and what pound test line to use and all those things. So uh, we meet pretty regularly just to go through those things. So do you do that at the school? I do it right at the high school. Okay. Yeah. And in fact, this year uh, they started letting us use their pool. Oh, nice. <laughs> Pretty soon you'll have fish in it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's our goal, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you have instructors that help volunteer to do that sort of thing too, so it's not always the same one or two Absolutely, people? Absolutely, yeah. We and, bring in the Ray Gildos and, and, uh, and let them speak. And then, and then on a typical year, if they're not interested in being in tournaments, because I think you, you and I have talked about this, there's tournaments almost every weekend mm -hmm. if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. But you said that people who don't, or kids that didn't want to be in tournaments, how, how often would they meet? Once a week or once uh, a couple well, times a month or how often? Well, once a month. Um, we also do a youth league every other Monday and we put uh, 44 kids on the water every other Monday and 22 boat captains. And that's really uh, a laid back, boat captains get to fish so they get to show and tell uh, that's where we do a lot of our teaching and instruction and things like that is during that fishing league. Uh, outside of that, we meet once a month. Um, you know, we encourage them. You, you, you think about when you started fishing, uh, if you wanted to put on a Carolina rig, I mean, you had to rent a video or something. I right? didn't have videos when I was fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, didn't, we didn't have TV then. <laughs> but I know what you're saying. We, or or yeah. get a book or... Yeah. Uh, now they pull out their phone, do they punch it in YouTube? Everything's on YouTube. Everything. Everything. Which Everything. Is a great thing. So, so these, these young guys and gals are leaps and bounds ahead of where a lot the of us were person. at that age. I mean. and, and how many of your kids would you say are girls? Um, what do we have? I think we had 22 gals last year. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, so a, a good portion. And some of them are very, very good anglers. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we just had a little knot tying contest here a couple months back, and uh, I had two gals in front of me, and I couldn't believe it. They figured it out like that. And wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Now, 
You have also been responsible yourself for starting a lot of other clubs. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, as Brainerd grew, um, we got a lot of media. And, and so a, a lot of teams, a lot of kids and parents and coaches from all over the state going, hey, we want to do that. But again, there was no, there was nothing that said, here's how you do it. Um, no master plan. There was not a master plan. Uh, so I had several, uh, well over 50 teams uh, reach out to us and say, hey, how do we do this? Um, so uh, Natalie is our, our main administrator. She put together some packets of, you know, kind of the stuff on how to start a fishing team and, and where to go. And we started sending these out. And, and next thing you know, it it, it really... But you personally it, have been involved in starting like 50-some yeah, yeah, chapters, o over, haven't you? Over 50 teams that, That's I, that I know of, yeah. That's a lot of volunteer time from yourself. Yeah, well, and it, 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 I, I think it's just a tip of the iceberg. It's going to continue to grow, and not just here in Minnesota. It is growing everywhere. How many of those kids that are involved in the program do you think really don't have access to a boat if it weren't for this? Um, a big percentage uh, of them? Probably, it's well over 50. Yeah. Um, the, the cool thing about high school fishing is we get to put two kids in a boat. So when we have uh, somebody join the team on our questionnaire or application, uh, when they join the team, one of our questions is, does your family own a boat? And if the answer is yes, it gives us an idea of how many built-in boats we have, built-in boat captains. And of course, we get to pair up an angler with that person. So that's where most of our boat captains come from, is within the team. Uh, that being said, we have a list of, of many volunteers who uh, donate their time and, and energy to get these kids out in the water. So it, it, it's kind of a combination, but there's a, a lot of kids who join our team who may not even had a fishing pole. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, uh, we, we literally teach them how to cast mm -hmm. or how to tie a knot or... All the basics. All, the, all the, the basics. The very, very basics. And the progressions of these kids on how good they're getting is, is really fun to watch. Now, you and I have talked about this before, but there are national organizations and more than one that a fishing team can belong to, like mm -hmm. BASS, mm -hmm. Bass. And there's another, what's the other group? Uh, TBF. And what does that stand Th that's for? That's the Bass Federation. The Bass Federation. They are the primary two large groups, are Correct. they not? And, and, the, and you, uh, you belong to both of them over we, the we time. Do, yeah, we've, we've worked with both. Um, the FLW is another organization, and they kind of partner with the TBF, so they do a lot of joint work. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we went down and fished a tournament this year down on uh, Pickwick Lake for the TBF FLW. In the first two spots, I think first place was fifty-six thousand in scholarships. Wow! And second place was fifty thousand. Wow! So I so they encourage kids to use scholarships to go on to college. Absolutely. Yeah, that's Abs cool. Absolutely. It's not cash layouts for kids. It's, not cash. It's yeah. incentives to keep your education going. E exactly. That's very cool. It is. It's very neat. Uh, and this what, what year, are the, what's the advantage for if somebody's going to start a fishing club in Hinkley? Mm -hmm. What would the advantage be of looking at those two groups? Do there are there benefits to belonging to them? Insurance is the main reason. Insurance. Yeah. So so both organizations charge twenty five dollars, and included in that twenty five dollars, they get an insurance policy, so that when they go on a third party boat captain, the boat captain can feel at ease, the school can feel at ease because those kids have insurance are covered. Um, very important. Sure. Uh, um, that being said. What we've done in Minnesota is actually we started an organization called the Student Angler Tournament Trail. And in Minnesota last year, we had our championship down on Lake Minnetonka, and we gave away $24,000 in scholarship money. Wow. Right here. That's impressive. Right here at the state, yeah. Wow. And uh, we'll continue to uh, grow that. So Kyler, Tyler, or Kyle, either one of you, <laughs> it's hard to get edge word in edgewise between the two of us, or I know, but <laughs> talk a little bit about your tournament experience and how you guys got involved. And but you can both talk or you can take turns, it doesn't matter to me. Well, you know, we really, um, we hadn't tournament fished much um, before the fishing team. Um, we did, we went out, you know, we grew up walleye fishing. I mean, we did it for fun. But I mean, our first, the very first tournament was the um, 
Minnesota State Championship, and that was an eye opener on um, what what it really really takes to be a, a, a good, good angler. Fisherman. And I mean, you're you're sitting at probably the most exciting part for me is just sitting at the launch, just waiting. You know, you hear the national anthem, they go over the prayer, and then just the the anxiety of just getting ready to take off is probably one of my favorite parts. They'll sit in there, and I mean, just the the different stuff you got to do throughout the tournament. It's not like, oh, let's just go try this spot and see if it works. It's like you got to have spot A, B, C, D, and E all the way down to Z if if none of them work out. So you got to keep moving. Yep, and it's just it's an eye opener on how. Um, like how talented some people really are. I mean, you you think oh they're they're good, and then you go and fish against them, and they're like they're one of the best out there, and you didn't realize it. And so I mean, it just opens your eyes on so many different aspects of it. Now, do you two fish as a team? Yep. And how many tournaments have you been in together? Well, I think we would we do twelve, twelve this year, yeah. and then probably 10 or 11 last year too so I mean it's almost so you've been in 20 some tournaments already and you're a junior and sophomore in high school yeah and that's not that's not including you know all the our, the locals. our you know our um, fishing leagues and then just um, some different adult tournaments that we fish together too that's just strictly high school fishing in the last couple of years are these strictly bass tournaments you're talking about or are they multi-species um they're mostly um, um bass fishing tournaments but then we did do one up on lake bemidji on uh, late september and that was the first ever uh, multi-species tournament you were allowed two walleyes five panfish and two bass and that was the um the the tbf inaugural multi-species tournament in the in the whole nation. The, their national championship. Yeah. And Tyler, have you guys placed? How have you done in these tournaments? Um, the one he's just talking about, the multi-species one, we actually won that one. And then down on Pickwick this year, we took And that's 18. in what state? On uh, Minnesota. Pickwick's in Alabama. Alabama. Yep. Mm. And uh, so that one, we took 18th out of 384. Wow, that's a lot of teams in that mm -hmm. tournament. Yeah. It took a while to get everybody out, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten flights, and you took 18th. Yep, out of 300 and some teams. Yeah, that's. I know for people who know about fishing, they know about the Linders. They started the In Fisherman yeah. magazine and Angling Edge, and and Al Linder has kind of deemed you two guys as rising stars in the business, hasn't he? Yeah, you know he um he has been very supportive of us, and uh, it it really helps that um you know we live a couple of miles away from his office, so. You know, uh -huh. we usually stop in and just say, "Hey, you how know, are you doing, huh? how's the, how's the, how's it going, and all that fun stuff." And so, I mean, we've really gotten um, to be real close to the whole Linder family, and um, they really, they really like the aspect of high school fishing, and they think that um, it's going to be the thing that drives the fishing industry later on. Uh, Jason, do you have any idea how many kids are involved statewide? Um, I've heard up to 3,000. Um, you know, there's there's three different organizations, so it's hard to, you know, really put a, a number on unique anglers. What I do know is that it's doubled every year. Wow. It keeps on doubling. It, it'll double, and, it, and it's gonna happen again. It's gonna happen again. It's gonna happen again. And it's really starting to have an impact on license sales um, nationally. You, you know, some of the, the national organizations are saying that the, the license sales between anglers of the ages of 16 and 22 years old are way up. Going up? Way, way up. Like That's 500%. a total reverse of the trend that was going on. Exactly. It, it, did, it did reverse a trend. Mm -hmm. uh, it was interesting, too, is, is we just got some numbers as far as there was a lot of years where, you know, technology was cool. It was new. It was, you know, wow, look at these gaming systems and things like that. And that trend is reversing, where uh, young people are now thinking it's cool to get outside and, and do some of the outdoor activities and, and things like that. So there's no doubt that it'll continue to grow. And that's similar to what we saw with trap shooting clubs exactly. in Minnesota. They've grown exponentially exactly. uh, really fast. Well, so we don't run out of time. We need to talk a little bit about your business because uh, Kyle and Tyler have started a little business on the side. And tell us what it is. And I know you got a 
sample or two, maybe we could lay it on the table and you could show us what you've got. Yeah, so what, um, what we do is we do um, a lot of bass, um, bass plastics, but then we also do some walleye and uh, crappie stuff. So we're really um, multi-species. And, um, you know, we tried to get into the market. You know, my dad, I turned 16, I started driving and stuff. And my dad's like, you're gonna get a job. You know, <laughs> you're, you're gonna pay for gas and stuff. And so, um, you know, Tyler and I came up with the idea, well, let's start this. Um, this business here and we'll see. Tyler, you know, could you hold just a couple of those up so the camera could take a look at them? You know, keep, we, keep talking. And we, you know, we thought, you know, we only know, we don't know of anybody that does bulk plastics. And so that's one of the key things that we tuned in on was the bulk plastic. So, I mean, you go out and you buy 10, uh, eight pack of Senkos and it's usually four or $5. We're charging a hundred Senkos for $22. Wow. So I mean, we're really. So you're very competitive price-wise. We're very competitive, and it's high, it's high quality too. I mean, it'll last you a very long time. And where do you have these manufactured? Um, you know, we outsource everything, so it's made it's made in Georgia, and then we um, package and do everything else in our, our basement, basically. Just the two of you? Um, you know, we we usually um, we hire a few buddies. You know, we get some chips and dips and stuff, and we have a good time <laughs> packaging baits and tell fishing stories and stuff like that. You know, years ago, there was two guys that used to go in their basement and make Lindy rigs and jigs, and their name was Ron and Al Linder. Yep. And uh, um, my friend Dutch Cragen, who has Cragen's Resort, used to, you know, he still has the resort next to where Ron Linder lives. And he said, I can remember seeing lights over there after dark. And there never used to be anybody on that part of the lake. Here are the Linders down in their basement, yep. <laughs> just the way you guys are doing it now. Yep. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and you know, Al was um, a big player too. He, he started, he um, ran the Fishing Careers Workshop, and then we, we attended that, and you know, we kept in the back of our mind, you know, you know, we can do something in the fishing industry, we just gotta figure out what we wanna do. And so he, he um, brought up that we gotta get a job and that inspiration from that careers workshop really pushed us to do it. It's, it's pretty tough for most people to make a living in the fishing industry without a supplemental income. I guess that's mm -hmm. the, the bottom line. There aren't many people like the lenders that can do it full time. So I think you guys are on a good track. And how's it going? How are the sales? It's, it's going very good. Um, you know, we're trying to, you know, with winter rolling in, we're trying to get to some states down in the south. Um, we've got couple of people that are very interested and so we're hoping that those sales will keep up throughout the winter and stuff. So when you guys are fishing tournaments and you go to a lake like Pickwick or some of those lakes, they don't let you usually pre-fish them, do they? They usually throw you on cold or, or do um, they let you pre-fish? Um, so they, um, you know, like Pickwick, they uh, cut it off a month before that you could fish it and then three days, you had three official practice days that you could go down, you know, find some fish, you know, make sure um, what, what you're doing and stuff so you're not going and you know completely blind they want to they give you a, some time to do it but they don't give you um, as as um as much time as some people would like you know mm -hmm. it's two or three days as tournament anglers how do you find the fishing in Minnesota for bass compared to where you've fished other places oh it's it, it's a completely different game you know we're fishing lily pads you know deep weed edges and stuff and you go down there you're idling miles and miles trying to find one school of fish off a ledge in 30 feet of water. How's the fishing? You know, the fishing can be... <laughs> Pretty um, tough. It can, it can be tough, but it can be very really good. Um, during the national tournament, we went down and our first day of the tournament, we'd probably gotten 120 fish. Wow. And then um, the next day, it was the same thing, you know, 100, 100 fish days. And, you know, but we go to some systems like the Ohio River and we, you struggled to get one bass. Mm. I mean, it's the, the variation in fishing um, is crazy. You know, up here we got clear lakes, you go down there, you stick your hand in a foot of water and you can't see it. I bet it sounds like the fishing league business has changed all of your lives, hasn't it? Oh, there's no doubt. To the good. Oh the yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, these guys have, have been really fortunate um, we've been fortunate. In fact, that first tournament uh, he talked about on Malax Lake, the state championship, um, he won at, at 13 years old. So he won his first wow, tournament. That's a pretty good deal, huh? And uh, <laughs> from from there, uh, we went to Lake uh, Carlisle in Illinois, 
And so uh, that started a trend. Every year now, I don't, uh, I no longer take a vacation because I know we'll be traveling. Uh, you know, we were down in <laughs> that Alabama. That is your vacation. That's the vacation. <laughs> you know, we've been to Illinois and Ohio. Uh, uh, he fished a national tournament for BASS in Tennessee, um, Alabama. You know, we've been to several states now uh, traveling around uh, doing this fishing. What so a great experience. It's, it's really fun. And the cool thing is now is that college fishing is also catching fire. Mm -hmm. So I know that when I can no longer pester these guys in the boat, they have an opportunity to go to out. To go fish for a, and, uh, and University, go University of Minnesota or yes, Kansas yes. or wherever. And yeah. scholarships available now. There's, yeah. there's a lot of colleges now that will actually pay an angler to come to their school and uh, fish for their school. Yeah, so that's great. So Jason, tell us if there's someone out there that doesn't have a fishing program in their community and they're mm -hmm. interested, what should they do? Go to studentangler.com and uh, we have a ton of information on there. Uh, my contact information is there. I work with a gentleman named Jimmy Bell. Uh, Natalie Peterson, who's our local admin, she also is our admin for the trail. Uh, Jeffrey Young here in Brainerd is our tournament director. He's also one of our assistant coaches. He understands it very well. Uh, Steve Cronin runs our youth league. There's a ton of resources out there. There's a ton of guys out there now who can uh, help get a team put together, where to go. The resources available now are night and day compared to what, what, we, what we started. Yeah. yeah, And it's good work on your part. Uh, you have done a lot, and I know you're not looking for credit for this. No. But You've done a lot to help a lot of groups going. I know when I was working at a sports show last spring, I ran across a guy who worked with you. His team was only seven, mm -hmm. you know, but he was really excited about you it. Sure. So for all of you guys, that's really, really good work. We're kind of running out of time, but thanks for jumping on with us. And uh, I'm going to be following you guys in your tournaments this year and see uh, what the next level is going to bring for you. Perfect. So thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it very much. Thanks for jumping on the show with us. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Thank you. you bet. You've been watching Lakeland Currents, where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time.